This is Justin Pulitzer. This is my weekend review video for Sunday, September 13th, 2015. We have a lot to discuss. The Fed is on deck this week. Uh, it's a little bit odd because of the Rosh Hashanah holiday, uh, a Happy New Year. And the, instead of them having a meeting that's Tuesday, Wednesday, I believe it's Wednesday, Thursday this week. So we're going to be in a little bit of limbo this week until that... Um, until that all-important Fed decision comes out. And I want to discuss a few things with regard to the Fed. Uh, as you know, a lot of you who follow me, I've written a couple of articles about this, and I've even coined a hashtag, this lower for longer thesis. And that had been uh, confirmed a little bit by the leaked minutes by the Fed. Their staffer is saying that the normalization was going to come in roughly around 3.5%. As opposed to the norm, um, the norm of six about six percent. Now the Fed has a lot to contend with before they make their decision here. The uh, market we all know has had a pretty fairly large move down in the last couple of weeks, and we've had a pretty large pop in implied volatility, as you can see on the screen. There's a, a pretty big spike here that took us up even over the last reference high, and you can see for the last year or so um, we've been fairly tame with 25 sort of being the uh, the upper end of that range and we well exceeded that into the 53s however we did for the first couple of times on Thursday and Friday did close some bars below um, comfortably that held two days back to back you can see here we tried then we kind of gapped and rallied so volatility is coming in a little bit I guess the um, the tide of fear is sort of receding a little bit However, that could get um, that could get going again if the Fed kind of makes him make goes the wrong way. Now, I've said for a while I've proposed that I thought that the jobs numbers have been kind of on the crappy side for quite some time, meaning the labor participation rate is the lowest in 37 years, and the quality of the jobs have not been great. Uh, there's been a lot of destruction, as we know, in manufacturing and in the oil and gas industry. And a lot of the jobs have been coming from waiters and waitresses and bartender type jobs, carnival ride operators. These kind of not kind of the higher end type of type of employment. I've also proposed that I thought that the GDP that the country has been experiencing has been stall speed. The first quarter had been negative. That was revived up to, revised up to 0.6, and the second quarter was actually pretty good. The um, expected was about. 2.3% and we came in at around 3.7%, which is a pretty healthy beat. But you have to factor in, my thesis is that a lot of the Q1 um, business that should have taken place was pushed out to Q2. And a lot of the, I guess, benefit of that that we've seen in, with had been with regard to um, the markets has been mitigated now because we have weakness in Asia. I've been saying for a while that there is risk, shock risk. We've seen a lot of that in China, and I expect uh, you've seen it in Brazil, Russia, India, all of the kind of growth engines of the of the world have been flaming out. I guess the U.S. has been doing a little bit better relatively, but the j big, big deal, the jobs numbers that everyone had been ha hanging their hat on with the full employment of rate of 5.1% is dubious at best, and even with that, even with that beat, um, you know, meaning that we're kind of back into the full employment, the numbers are starting to soften a little. The 173,000 versus the 217, even a couple of his last employment report was disappointing. Yes, August was revised up about 30,000 jobs, but, you know, a, a miss is a miss. And, you know, I believe that I personally think that the Fed should want to wait and see what the impact of this Chinese um, you know, deflationary scenario is going to be, you know, Japan has been weakening, the rest of the world has been weakening, the U.S. has been kind of holding on a little bit in terms of our data, but it's sort of just kind of eking over the mark. This isn't a robust economy. So the, the real, I guess, decision the Fed is going to have to make is do they want to start normalizing rates into a global slowdown or do they want to wait? My theory is that they're going to wait. I believe it's about a 70-30 chance that they do wait. We'll have to see how that goes. In the meantime, I have said that there are potential scenarios to be looking for, and I'm going to lay out some of those here tonight. 
um, today or whenever you're going to see this. So the f first few things to look at, number one is the VIX. If the VIX is still above 25, that keeps crash risk scenario on the table. You can see we're a little bit below there, which is good. However, I've been saying I'm a little bit concerned that we may have to have a rally to a lower high in the VIX to sort of show the bears that the weakness is over. If not, you know, we could be back up off to the races in the VIX and you want to be careful with that. The other main things to be looking at are the dollar, the US dollar, which has been kind of relatively strong and just consolidating a lot of those gains. Although here we've been stalling at the 50 and starting to roll over. We we're kind of just pinned between the um, 50 and the 200 here. And you can see there's a lot of sort of volume in this in this area. The Bulls for U.S. equities want to see a lower U.S. dollar. The bears would like to see it come back up and retest these highs and maybe punch through. I'm a little worried that this scenario could happen, particularly if the Fed does make some type of a policy error and move too soon at this meeting. That would be bullish for the dollar. Now, why is that bad for stocks? A lot of companies do business overseas, and the weaker they... Um, the weaker the dollar, the more they profit. The stronger the dollar, the less they profit. Just keep it that simple. So if you have a dollar that comes back up and gets stronger, earnings estimates, and that is what the stock market is priced on in the longer term, have to come down. And that to me would mean another leg down in the, in the stock market. And I'll, I'll discuss what I think that that could look like. If the Fed does what I think they're going to do, this should come in further. You'll see further weakness in the dollar. You'll also see a rally in the treasuries. That's also another key factor for us to look at. You can see the treasuries here have been a little bit soft. We are below the 2009 crash high, which was the um, 123.15. And the weaker this gets, the worse it is for stocks. You know, a lot of people say, oh, um, for some reason the media has been under the impression that weaker bonds is good for the stock market, but weak bonds mean higher interest rates stocks are valued based on a discounted cash flow model and i don't want to get too wonky for it with you guys but the higher interest rates go the weaker the sort of price earnings multiple stock should be seeing the lower interest rates go the more of a price mul earnings multiple that stock should be seeing I've been saying also that i believe the real risk for the fed is deflation we have seen that and I'm going to show you some charts that are absolutely stunning. Um, this is already down ginormous from, I'll show you from, this is oil, the oil chart, by the way, the crude futures. If you take a look at, um, oops, let's go five years, let's just go weekly. You can see oil has been down a lot. Uh, this has just been an absolute cascade lower. It tried to rally. It's been making new lows. However, I believe that we are trying to sort of bottom somewhere between this 33 and 37 level. Um, I know that Goldman Sachs came out this past week and they had said that they thought oil could potentially see $20 again, which is where it was in the 90s. The world has gone into a bit of a different type of a model. China, you know, and India, these are becoming economies that are really dependent on oil. They're going to. They're trying to become more like us with the use of cars. I'm not so sure that the oil is going to get that low again. If there is some type of a liquidation crash in the market, maybe it's theoretically possible. But I like to start hearing that estimates for oil prices are now in the 20s. Now that they're in the, you know, when now that we're down this much and into the 40s. As opposed to, uh, and this, by the way, were the same people who were calling for $200 oil when oil was 150, you know, 140, 150, um, but way back when. So they seem to get it wrong at the extremes, and maybe they're getting it wrong here again. We've had a bit of a rally. The 50 MA has been sort of the barrier, the great barrier that has held back oil. So you really need to see the 50 MA breached for another move higher. I do believe at some point oil will rally up to see 75 again. After that, I'll have to um, reassess, but I'm not, I don't know for a fact that we're not going to have to you know, come back down and kiss the lows, particularly if the Fed does make a policy error again and raise interest rates. 
uh, oil is priced in dollars gold is priced in dollars as you can see these have all been disasters these charts let me go back a little further with this yeah uh, you can see that this is this bull market eh, I'd have to go back further but I don't really want to cover gold too much I would say this though if gold does get down to the big 61.8 percent Fibonacci retracement down in the 196s I would be a very interested buyer for some type of a write or write out trade I do think somewhere between 100.62 um, I maybe I do have to go a little further out then to show you this um, yeah you see here this is really where the breakout took place this high here was um, 100.44 so I guess we could use that so somewhere between 100.44 and uh, and this 96.35 I do believe, and you can see it's also the beginning of a large volume distribution. That would take back all of this bull market. We would kind of get back into fair, more fair territory. I believe down here would be a good area to sell some puts, and or um, you know start legging into a long position with gold. So anyway, sorry to get um, sidetracked with gold, but um, another issue, one of the one of the main um, ones that I've said are important here is also China. You can see we've taken back this all of this rally. We are now back down near these lows. I do believe somewhere between 32 and this low here in the 28s should support. Um, I would be inter uh, interested put out of the money put seller if we got back down to that area. I don't know that the worst is is kind of over in China, but I will say that the um, encouraging part here is that we are starting to stabilize a little bit with regard to China. You can see there's a bit of a consolidation pattern. You have a higher low here. You do have a lower high, but it is kind of it's not sort of just dumping. It would be encouraging to see this maybe come back up. That's the kind of things you want to look at. So just make this note. You want to look at the VIX, the dollar. The bonds be a TLT, the oil, and the um, FXI. You have to see those things uh, rally. The main concern, and this is what I've been saying, with the Fed should be worried about, is look at this. This is copper. This is Freeport MacMoran. It's back down to the 2009 crash lows. So the crash in commodities has already taken place. Uh, I guess I have to go back even longer. Wow, it's been you know a long time now since these um, since these lows. You can see we rallied and now we are basically back down to these old all time lows after a crash. You know the Fed when they if they're going to move usually moves to stop a overheating economy, which we clearly don't have, as I've demonstrated to you with the stall speed type of GDP that we have. Um, the Fed has also not been able to meet their two percent uh, inflation targets ever. So that is, um, I, I should say, in, in recent times, I shouldn't say ever of all time, but of, of late, they have not been able to reach it. And the employment numbers are dubious at best. So I don't really see what the f inflation fighting hawks really are talking about here with the need to normalize. You know, if anything, like I said, the deflation here is the kind of the bigger problem than worrying about fighting inflation. You could even see this in the grains. Oops. You can see we are, we are basically back down. We've even surpassed these lows from way back in the bad old days. I discussed copper with you before, but you can see with JJC, this isn't quite at the uh, all-time lows, but it is back to the 78.6% Fibonacci retracement from the um, you know rebound into 2010 and 11, and we've just been selling off ever since. So we've been experiencing deflation. Some of these other stocks, like look at BP. This is almost back down to the Macondo spill lows back down in 26. This is an absolute beatdown. Chevron, same kind of thing. Look at this ugly, ugly chart with this big slide. We're back down to a 78.6% Fibonacci retracement. I'm sorry, a 61.8% Fibonacci retracement. So the kind of crash, uh, there is sort of a stealth crash taking place in commodities. However, as we know, it has not really affected the United States stock market that much. You can see we are nowhere near those lows. We are all the way back up near these highs. We have recently, though, started to see volatility creep back into the market, and we are experiencing a pullback. There was a bit of a flash crash here, 
after we breach this um, reference area, I guess the algos kick in, the stop losses kick in. It comes down, and then you know we're kind of have just been bouncing around. You know this 50% fib retracement from these highs down to here. And you know when we were up here, I had said to people that they should be looking to liquidate their longs because this time might be different. This is it was roughly a 61. It is was exactly a 61.8% Fibonacci retracement from the 2007 crash peak highs to the. Um, pre-crash peak highs, I should say, to the March 2009 lows. We got back up here. We've been marking time for the better part of a year, and now we have had a more of a severe liquidation break out of balance, and now we're kind of bare flagging, if you will, below the consolidation range. I have said that I do think it's possible for us to kind of retest this more prominent volume area, you can see where this volume really picks up the volume distribution up around the 204s. So if you take a look at the um, expected move for this week and with regard to the SPY, it's about $5.62 would take us up to about the 202s. Um, I think that that could probably blow past to the 204s, particularly if we take out this flag high, you can see we're for, sort of forming the flag. So if we have failure, sort of pattern failure. This is a bear pattern. You know, theoretically, this should consolidate here a little bit, and then you know we drop for the next leg down. But if you were to have pattern failure and this high was to be taken out, I do believe we would see those 204s fairly quickly. If, however, we have pattern, um, you know, follow through, pattern success, so to speak, and this bear flag pull does play out. I think at the very least we would retest some of these lows somewhere between the 190. I mean, I know it's a pretty big range, but probably somewhere between this 187s and um, 18192, which is a bit roughly the um, the lows from some reference lows from from back before. So the 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 expected move, by the way, taking it down to 91. So that would be the snap of the pattern. And I unfortunately think if this pattern starts to break, particularly on the Fed, that we do have lower to see. Um, I've heard it proposed that um, you know it would be good if we kind of rally up and get the pattern to sort of break ahead of the Fed. But I actually believe that it would behoove us to not so much look at this as you know, a, a flag in this respect, but just as a big range. And I think it would actually, believe it or not, be safer that if we sold off into the Fed ahead of time and get all of these, the get of all these sort of chicken little sellers out of the way, all the people who have been kind of trying to buy the dip who still haven't given up, just get them cleared out. If there's weakness into the number, I do believe that it would set up for a long because I said I don't think the Fed is raising hiking. If they do hike, I, I've also I've also heard a few people say that um, a lot of this is already factored in the Fed and that there might be some type of a relief rally on the actual release even if they do raise interest rates. I don't believe that will happen. I believe that we will go lower. However, I am prepared for that scenario and if we do have a some type of a knee-jerk relief rally, which sounds ridiculous to me, I do believe that that will set up for an amazing right or right out type of a short setup somewhere up around the 204s and the 205s. I do believe that that area is going to be some major resistance. It's also the, the backside of a prior, the old up channel. It's where the major volume resistance, you know, the old supports were, now will be resistance. I would think that that would be an amazing setup for a short because, like I said, if the Fed raises rates, the dollar is going higher, interest rates are going lower. I'm sorry, interest rates are going higher, and that is bad for the um, bad for the stock market. So that's my theory with spy. So if we come in weak, I think it's a long. If we wind up coming in strong and we're already up here, I would probably think that it's probably a short. Believe it or not, ahead, uh, on the Fed. Um, my a lot of people who I've seen technicians. I, I watched a few um, videos. I read a couple of blogs this weekend, and I just finished reading one a little while ago. And a lot of them are are not thinking um, like money managers do. And we do have the end of the quarter coming in, the end of the September quarter. I'll, I've been reading all of these hedge funds, all of these big funds are down um, on the year, and I think that they need to play a little bit of performance catch up. And I think a benign Fed 
would have the market rally because these guys need to make have some performance catch up on positions, being that they, um, you know, September is the end of the third quarter. Excuse me, sorry. So I'm I'm sort of thinking that the bear flag could potentially break up on a on a on a on a good on a good Fed scenario. I'm also thinking though that if the Fed does hike and there's a policy mistake this is going to be retested. So you have to be really nimble. And I'm, like I said, my theory is that we are going to um, have a good, uh, you know, a quote unquote good Fed. Um, but if, the, if, I, if that isn't incorrect, I do think that there is more correction in the cards for the market. IWM showing some relative weakness as well, kind of just skirting up to the, um, I have to uh, read, I actually have to redo a fib here for this. But um, it, it roughly got a little bit past the measured move that I had discussed. This has been making lower highs and lower lows for a while. And it's sort of just chopping around below the lower end of the range, these 117s, um, the high even being one, it, it 116. So we didn't even get the 117s. So I believe that this below the 117.37 and below the 120.58 is dubious. I'd be very careful. I would love to see this do some type of a rally back up to here and set up for a right or right out short right on the downtrend line. That is what I'm thinking. The knight in shining armor here are the Qs. This chart isn't nearly as bad as the others in the respect that we did get a uh, trend touch, but we are back much stronger into range. Look at um, what I was talking about here. and. Um, I've been saying for a while that I thought the one, you know, there was a, we all know, I had told you guys that I had had a problem with my computer and I lost my old charts. But if you go back and you look, the um, two, 105s, the 104s, the 103, all of that area had a lot of support. And now we're kind of just kissing back up above, uh, right into the support here of the 105s. So we may get an answer with the NASDAQ a little bit sooner. Like if this were to roll over here, I think that that would be showing a lot of relative weakness, um, meaning that the, um, the support didn't, became the resistance here. And if we roll over, I would think that the rest of the tape would probably follow um, if this does punch through and get up higher into these areas down to the 109s then probably the rest of the tape will lead some of the uh, momentum stocks are actually starting to perk up a little bit and look a little bit better you can see apple broke this downtrend it's sort of just hovering under the um, it's still below 115 115 was um, if you go back in t in your time machine a little bit let's see if i could do it uh, one year daily yeah, right here, this close here, this 115.07, this was a bit of a flash crash day in Apple. And I think anything below that 115.07, in my opinion, and you can see the low here on this sort of gap pullback was in the 115s. Anything below if 115 to me is a little vulnerable and we're kind of just coming back up to there. But if that does break, then I do think we will see the 50 day moving average up in the 118s and potentially this 119.75 to 120 which was really the um, where this support came in. And then when the failure happened, you know, you can see, look, we rebounded up to there. And then that's really when the collapse took place. So I do believe that if we could take the 115s, we would probably challenge this again. If this area doesn't resist, then I think Apple has a lot of run in sort of gas in the tank. But these, again, are really key levels. And it's sort of just been chopping here. Um, looking for this to, to either resolve up here to set, like I said, set up for some type of a right or right out short here for a pullback. Or if this were to get back down here to the 103s to 100s, I think that that will set up for some type of a right or right out bounce play. I have discussed on a longer time frame that I do think the 95s could be reached, which we did. And I do even believe it or not think that 85s could be reached if the market, like if the Fed did the wrong thing here. That is the big 61.8% retracement from the entire big run. Um, trend is a little bit below there in the 80s, although by the time we got there, maybe it would coincide, you know. Uh, we'll have to see. Sometimes there is a little bit of an overshoot. Like here, you can see Apple overshot by like three bucks. So here, maybe it overshoots by a couple of bucks and gets the primary trend. But I think somewhere between the primary trend and the 61.8 would be an absolute screaming buy if there was some type of a... Um, 
you know, a major pullback that could probably set up for a great long for into year end. Um, it would help if I can type. Google is looking a little bit less bearish than the pack. It, it, I think that it was sort of a victim of its own success. It rallied up into the um, earnings. It had this gap pulled back. This was when they announced the sort of the split up. They're splitting Google into a couple of different parts. I don't want to get into that. And then you had the failure, refilled the gap, and now it's sort of just back into this sort of lower end of the range. Google on a PE multiple basis isn't that um, expensive. My fear here is though that the um, the Fed would do the wrong thing and then this is a big high dollar stock that could be used for um, margin calls. And I think that's really what's been plaguing a lot of these stocks like the Apples and the Googles that they've been used for funds to meet um, redemptions and such. Uh, you can see here roughly the 50 day moving average has been the, um, has been the hold here. You had a little bit of an exception below there. Um, so I would say that you could use, if you're long, I would say you could use the 50 day as your stop. Um, maybe play for a move back up into you know the upper part of the range. Uh, I don't mind put ratios, um, put you know, put ratios to play for a move back down to here if, if on weakness. That to me um, would be an interesting level if there is some, like I said, if there is some type of a larger pullback on the Fed. The 583s was really the major breakout. I would love to be waiting here to sell some out of the money puts, you know, maybe against the trend, somewhere between there and the trend. Um, and I do believe that that would set up for a great opportunity. You can see Google has been, that, that trend has held for quite some time. I think that would set up really well. Um, if it uh, does wind up playing back up, you know, the highs are very possible. Uh, Facebook, one that everyone knows I've been a fan of. This was also a victim of the uh, the flash crash here. It got back down back down to oddly the 72s, which were the old highs. Um, I don't even know if I need to go back three years, but look, you can see this old top, this major pullback, and look where we pulled back into. That's where the algos took it to. My really biggest fear with this stock is that when this happens, the algos cash those levels and they like to be retested. Um, that hasn't really happened in this, in this instance. We've actually rallied. This is actually, the stock looks much stronger than a lot of the other ones. And it is um, roughly sort of breaking now the downtrend and holding the 50-day moving average. However, there is a little bit of resistance up here in the 93s to like 90, the 92s to 93s. So I would be a little bit careful if you happen to buy this well. I'd be looking to maybe book a little bit of profits. You also have some of these people who might be wanting to get their money back. On weakness, I am a um, still a Facebook proponent. I like it somewhere between the 81s and 85s. I know it's a bit of a wide range, 82s to 85s. Somewhere in this breakout area, I do believe you can see there's some price memory. I think there are enough people that missed it that I think that would set up for some type of a good write or write out type of a play. If um, the market is to be strong, I would think Facebook will retest, uh, you know, come back up and retest the 100 on a benign Fed. I do believe that that will be chased because it's been pretty good relative performance. And I've laid out the um, case for Facebook more times than I care to um, review. I don't need to get into it again. Um, Amazon also looking fairly bullish over the downtrend line. This was sort of a lights out um, move. It did come back down, retested kind of close. I was I was actually waiting for a little bit lower here, 439s. We never quite got there. It's kind of rallying back up. This could be a good play for the holidays, fourth quarter. I think that's what people are thinking. Uh, again, another one. You know, the 50-day moving average here had been um, good support here. Had been pretty decent support here. Uh, it did break here, but we you could see we didn't spend a lot of time below it. So I think you could play this, you know, long against the 50-day if you, if you want to, you know, maybe sell some near dated out of the money puts, or if you want to play for a play move back down to there on some type of Fed weakness, maybe buy a um, put at the 50, whatever it is at the time, and then one, you know, a little bit lower, maybe back down near these lows. I think that, that would set up for a good um, risk reward. Uh, again, I want to just go over some of these stocks that have been murdered. These Amberellas, you can see this. This is what I've been referring to on the stream is the silliness in the market. Um, you can see this re really got like a way ahead of its skis. It had a pretty large pullback. It retested the highs and then had a 
confirmed double top failure, the retest, and now coming back down. So this is really starting to become some really key levels for Amberella. Um, I actually, believe it or not, am starting to turn my view on this and starting to look more for a bounce. Now that we're down to one of the 61.8s on one time frame, there is a trend here, and also on another time frame, another 61.8. So if there is some more weakness on this, particularly early in the week, I'll be looking to sell some probably near dated out of the money puts or maybe even um, play for a little bit of a bounce. Longer term, and I want to—I do want to stress time frames. When you talk about these stocks, time frame does matter. There is a very defined, rather not steep uptrend back down here, right where the breakout took really the real breakout took place around the 36s, 37s, and that's down here. I do think longer term, it's possible if the market really wants to roll over, we could see that. I like put ratios, you know, buying some puts up here, selling some puts down here, and that being the um, that being sort of the terminus. I do um, do think though that there should be if the if the market, you know, this there should be like I said some pri a little bit of price memory in here. I would be really really careful if you're sort of late to the party and first trying to short this. And if you are, you know, hats off to you. Maybe book a little bit of profits here. Wait for a bounce to reshort. Maybe it does something foolish, like fill the gap or get you know back back to these 90s, 93s, 96s. This to me would set up for an amazing right or right out short to re you know re get the party started. I don't know if it's going to be that strong. Although you know, like I said, on a benign Fed, maybe the silliness kind of comes back into vogue. Um, GoPro. Everyone knows I've hated this company stock, the management for quite some time. Um, the stock is almost back to all-time lows around the 28s. Um, you know, I said if it broke the 37s, the 28s could be in play. Maybe it, you know, it doesn't want to go fully and it wants to bounce first. But down by, you know, somewhere between, uh, I wouldn't be first shorting it here. You know, I mean, maybe if you want to play this on near dated, maybe do some put ratios. Um, you know, buy some of these puts, sell some of these, or something below probably would be a little bit smarter because I do think that there could be a look below. Longer term, I think this stock could, believe it or not, see single digits, but it would not shock me ahead of the holidays to see the sort of hope spring eternal, and maybe it does want to rally back up into um, re to um, retest the uh, the old uptrend line, and maybe in the 43s, that'd be a pretty nice run. It would suck if you first started shorting it here, though. So I do, as much as I dislike GoPro, I do think that there will be some type of a right or right up bounce play soon. So that is my theory on GoPro. Um, another one in these sort of hope uh, springs eternal is the Fitbit. Um, yeah, I had said here that uh, you know I thought the top was 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 kind of in in the stock that I had um, I, I bought a Fitbit and ever since it's been sort of a, a debacle, right? The stock is coming back down. Uh, the, I do also like like GoPro though. I do think that there are going to be some buyers here um, for a bounce at least at the, in the 29s. I would not first be shorting this stock down here. It's back down into some reference areas. It's time to you know. Books and profits and cover. Another one, Mobileye, and this one first. Um, this one did get a lot lower. It got into a, um, a sort of a volume distribution node. Um, it didn't quite get the 78.6, but this did have a really nice reversal on Friday. It closed a body above the um, Thursday body. I think that this could potentially fill the gap on a squeeze. I'm sure there's a ton of people who were chasing this short. And um, it could get there. A, a longer term, I do think that this could see roughly the this gap fill in the 34s, maybe the primary trend back down um, back down here near the ref these reference lows in 32s. Um, but you know, again, these aren't the kind of stocks you want to short. Um, you know, want to chase the short. You want to wait for the rallies to short them into. That's my theory on these. You know, don't chase. On the other hand, another one is that is showing a lot of relative strength is JetBlue. You can see this has been in a protracted uptrend for quite some time, and even with the market in correction mode, on Friday JetBlue made all new all-time highs. Um, or I shouldn't say all-time highs, but because the stock had been much much higher when it came public, but recently um, it is get, but it is starting to get a little bit close to this channel high. You can see we did. 
kind of trade above there, but it wound up being trouble. So if you are long JetBlue, congratulations. Probably time to book a little bit of profits on into strength. Um, and then wait for a pullback to um, you know to buy the dip again. But the the stock is, I've been saying for a while, is the best of the airline stocks, and it's 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 they're they're really doing better with their business. I recently flew JetBlue, and I thought that they were had been upping their game a little bit again. They had fallen behind a little in technology, but it um, they seem to be doing a bit better. Netflix. Uh, actually, let's leave it in a bit of a longer term mode. I want to show you. This was here, this 69, 90, let's say 70 bucks here. This was very defined tops for a while, and this is really where the run got going. I have been playing um, Netflix, and I said back up here, I thought that if you wanted to play right or right out short against. Um, I'll show you what I had been seeing, and if you want to go back and look in these videos, I had said I thought I saw some tweezers, some reversal pars, and it did wind up being a short. Um, I didn't wind up shorting it up here, although I did short it. I was short for the flash crash day. I was short from uh, 105, and I covered in the 93s, not quite at the dead low. Um, I wasn't quite that fast, but it wound up being pretty well. I had said that I thought back up here it was a good reshort. And it's come back down. I do think I I do have some put ratios on this. I have um, long 85, two, short two times the 80s, um, and then I also have 75 70s in weeklies um, going for next week, and I think maybe even the week after. I have to I have to take a look. Um, but I do believe that it's possible that this wants to come back down and retest these lows somewhere around 80, somewhere between 85 and 77, which is a big 61.8% fib. Um, it's also a 200-day moving average. It's sort of also where this kind of got going. Uh, longer term, I do think it's possible that this does do something like overshoot down to the 70s. But you know, this stock has come down quite a bit. You know, you want to be shorting it on bounces. You don't want to be shorting in the hole into weakness. Um, I do believe as long as it's below this neckline of this 103.88, I would be willing to stipulate that it could even go back up to 105, um, the 105s. That anything in there, um, I do believe, is still relative weakness, and this could be set up for some type of a right or right out short. Like, I'm, I actually had proposed playing this both ways um, in the um, on the stream last week. I had said if you wanted to play this long uh, cheaply, buy one a 109 call and sell two times as many. Um, I think it was uh, 113s. Uh, that would be roughly where this gap fill is. That's 115, um, and then um, the break even I think was about 117, which was back up to this shoulder. So um, if you wanted to play for some type of a bounce to retest the 50, I still like that if you can get that on for a credit. And I also are like playing it for a move back down into these lows. So that's sort of my view on how to play Netflix. Price line I had been discussing I thought was showing a lot of relative strength. Um, Take a look at this. Um, this was setting up for a uh, head and shoulders breakdown pattern. You know, a lot of technicians always assume head and shoulders have to resolve lower, and that a breakdown of a head and shoulders, of course, you know, resolves in lower. When there is pattern failure and a head and shoulders fails, meaning you can take out the right shoulder, there is usually a move into or at to the top of or even exceeding the head. Now. Take a look at this. This stock should have really rolled over here. Instead, it held the 50. You had what I referred to as a professional gap here this day because you gapped, a big action in the gap, and then gap and go back into resistance over these shoulders, highs. And then the next day, the market was weak, but we still kind of held in there, and then we've just been holding above. So if you're short, be really careful. If you're long, um, 120, I'm sorry, 1280.97 would be, um, you know, one one stop. I really actually would like to use this as the low, this low, this 1274.50. I believe that these lows, if this gets violated, will it will roll over. It would probably be a. Um, this would then constitute the right shoulder. Meaning that this wasn't it, but we, you know, the stock had a little bit more momo for whatever, and it, this would be the right shoulder, and it could be a um, sort of a slanted neckline. You can see it sort of is that. If you take this away, 
and you draw the neckline, um, this is really a little bit more advanced, it's more than I really wanted to get into, but you can see we sort of have a, um, we don't have a horizontal neckline, it's sort of a little bit on an angle, so maybe that's why this was coming up and then it you know, would break down. So just be a little bit careful. I do think that this is showing a lot of relative strength. I would not want to be short this, I'll just go on the record in saying that. Um, and I will finish and conclude on Tesla. Um, Elon Musk bought the stock. Uh, they did a secondary at two, uh, 242 was his buy-in price. We're at uh, 250. Anything above the 242, I believe, is a long. It's also roughly coincides. You can see with this 20-day moving average, which is in the 243s. So a break of the 20 and a break of the 242. And you know, let's get be out of there looking for a, a move. And I would be playing at that point ratios or spreads or whatever short down to this 224, 225 for some type of a retest of filling up that gap. It probably could push even lower, maybe the 21s, maybe even back down to trend, which is between 203. There's also some reference support in the 205s, 206s. But I do believe as long as this holds in over the 242, the risk is to the upside. Anything below there, then obviously to the downside. So keep it simple, stupid. Anyhow, if you're not following me, my handle is at Justin Pulitzer. Please hit the subscribe button to my channel. If you're watching this, of course, you're watching this on YouTube, um, you would get notifications for new videos being posted. You'd also get notices when I put up Periscope rebroadcasts or special edition videos. I haven't done a few of those in a while, but th there are some that will be coming. Please hit the thumbs up and like. The best, best compliment you guys can give me if you like this video is retweet and favorite when I post it or just copy the link from, from here on um, on YouTube and post it. I, it, it. It helps. It's much appreciated. Anyhow, uh, thank you guys. Let's have a good week. And I will touch base with you on Periscope about the, the probably right after the Fed decision. We'll, we'll do a Periscope, I, I think, on Thursday to discuss how I think we... Um, Actually, Thursday might be tough for me. Um, I'll figure it out. We might do a nighttime periscope, or maybe it'll be on Friday. It might be Friday. It'll probably be later on in the week. Maybe we'll do right before. Um, all right, let's uh, have a good week, and cheers.